Every good RPG needs a good healer, and what better example of that than Natasha? She is Honkai Star Rail's dedicated free-to-play healer. She also is someone you're going to be using quite frequently on all of your teams if you did not pull Bailu on that standard banner. She is amazing for content like the Simulated Universe and the Forgotten Hall, and today we're going to be talking about everything you need to build the perfect Natasha. Without further ado, let's get in to the video. Firstly, let's talk about Natasha's kit. So she is going to be your dedicated healer. All her skills and ultimates are going to revolve around her healing. Her normal attack, however, is going to be that of a normal attack and just deal basic physical damage. However, normal attacks in this game are actually very, very valuable because they give you an opportunity to get back those valuable skill points, which you can then give to other units to use their skills instead. Also, depending on the enemy's weakness, this physical attack can help reduce the enemy's breakpoints. Her skill is going to be a very simple healing ability that is going to heal for 8.7% of Natasha's max HP plus another 196. And then she's also going to restore another 6% of her own HP plus 134 for two turns. This is obviously going to scale with your talent level. Mine is a little higher because I got some Eidolons for hers. That is going to be the same case for the ultimate, which is going to be a big AoE heal. Heal, that's going to heal all allies for 11.5 of Natasha's max HP. These skills are both very good in multiple different circumstances. We're going to get more into why the skill is so good in a couple seconds here. Uh, but the next thing I want to talk about is going to be her talent. Whenever an ally is below 30% HP, Natasha is going to heal 35% more to them, allowing those low health units to restore back all the way up to full. Lastly is going to be her technique. When she enters battle with this technique, she is going to do physical damage equal to 80% of her own attack. And she also has an 100% base chance to weaken all enemies on the field. Weaken enemies all deal 30% less damage to allies for one turn. Uh, I personally do not like to use this when entering battle. It's not a bad effect at all. But the thing is, it only really lasts for one turn. It's going to be really nice for that one turn. But after that turn, it's not really that useful. Now that isn't all there is to her kit. However, there are some additional things that come in the form of bonus abilities. You can unlock three of these throughout the game. Coming in at Ascension 2, Ascension 4, and Ascension 6. Uh, the first one you're going to get at, at Ascension 2 is a very, very strong one, and it's what makes Natasha's skill so strong. This skill is going to remove one debuff from a target ally. So now this skill is not only healing, it's also removing debuffs. And there are a lot of times in challenges like the Simulated Universe, especially in World 5 with Kafka and in the Forgotten Hall, where you're going to be getting debuffed a lot. So this ability is very, very strong. Her next bonus ability that's going to get unlocked at Ascension 4 uh, is just going to be more healing bonus, or I guess in this game it's considered outgoing healing increase. And then coming in at Ascension 6, she's going to increase the duration of her skill continuous healing effect for a single turn. So instead of this being two turns of getting more HP, it's now going to go to three turns. Another thing that you're going to notice in these traces here is that a lot of these stat bonuses are going to give you HP, uh, which is the game's way of telling you that obviously you're going to want to stack a lot of HP to get your Natasha as much HP as possible so that she is healing as much as possible as well. Next up, let's discuss light cones. Now we're going to start with her best in slot, which is going to be the only five star option in the game. And it's going to be more of a whale option instead of a free to play option, unless you just happen to get lucky and get this. Or if you save up your star glitter and are going to buy this like a year from now when you eventually save up enough, this is going to be her best in slot. This card has a flat bonus of 18% extra max HP and also 12% extra outgoing healing. It also has an additional effect where it's going to record your outgoing healing and then use that as damage. This additional damage can be triggered whenever one of your units attacks an enemy. However, this additional damage cannot get any buffs and it can only be used once per turn. So this isn't going to be a huge damage increase, but it is, however, just a nice little additional effect that's just going to help you get off a little more damage on the enemy. Next up, her battle pass option which is going to be for low spenders. Warmth Shortens Cold Nights is a light cone that is going to increase your HP by an extra 16%. Another just a flat buff, another really nice flat buff. And then additionally, whenever you use Natasha's base attack or skill, you're also going to restore all your allies HP by an equal to 2% of their respective max HP. Now, personally, this isn't my favorite light cone for her. In terms of four stars, I do think there are other better alternatives. However, this one is good 
but I do find that it relies a lot on refinement because only healing 2% of a unit's respective max HP is really not going to be that much in the grand scheme of things. It is going to be like a nice little additional effect if you feel like you're taking damage a lot and you need this card. However, there are some better alternatives, which we are going to discuss in a minute. Moving on from the whale slash dolphin options, we're going to go to my favorite four stars for her, which are going to be quid pro quo and shared feeling. These, in my opinion, are going to be her best in slot four star options. And here is why. Both of these light cones have abilities where they're able to regenerate energy. Now, energy regeneration is something that is very important in this game when trying to keep your character's ultimates off of cooldown. Quid Pro Quo is going to regenerate 8 energy for a randomly chosen ally, excluding the wearer so it cannot restore Natasha's energy, whose current energy is lower than 50%. Now this one is a little more random and I don't like it as much as the other one which we're going to talk about in a minute, but it is still a good buff in terms of trying to get as much energy as possible for all of your allies. You can kind of pick who gets this, just depending on whose ultimate is at lower than 50%, but it can be kind of hard to work around, and that is why I like shared feeling so much more. This is going to increase the wearer's outgoing healing by 10%, and then also whenever she uses her skill, she's going to regenerate 2 energy for all allies. This one not only includes Natasha in the buff, so she's going to restore 2 energy for herself as well as all her allies. It is also going to have a flat bonus effect of outgoing healing by 10%, and it's a guaranteed effect and it's not randomly assigned to one character, instead it's going to be assigned to everybody. Now this gets really better at max level, instead going to 20% increase outgoing healing bonus and you instead restore 4 energy for all allies. The other two 4 star options are both good options, but I just don't like them much as the energy restoration options, as I value energy restoration a lot over healing, because Natasha is obviously going to restore a lot of healing just naturally using her scale and her burst. Post-op conversation is going to increase the energy recharge rate of Natasha and increase her outgoing healing whenever she uses her ultimate by 12%. This one isn't bad, and it's definitely going to help Natasha in terms of getting her ultimate back up on cooldown. The last four star is perfect timing, which is personally my least favorite option. It increases the wearer's effect resistance. Effect resistance is essentially going to help you avoid debuffs, which is good, but I don't feel like it's as essential as getting more outgoing healing or energy restoration. It also increases outgoing healing by an amount equal to 33% of your effect resistance, which again, I don't think effect resistance is something that you're really going to want to be stacking on your Natasha, so I do not highly recommend this. And even if you do stack effect resistance on her, you can only get this bonus effect up to 15% anyways, so I'd say this card is a little niche. Her best 3 star option out of the only 3 available here, Conocopia, Find Fruit, and Multiplication, is going to be Cornucopia. This is going to increase the scale and ultimate healing by 12%. A very basic buff, not much to it. However, if you cannot get a 4 star, this is going to be your best alternative for early game. Next, let's talk about Natasha's best relics. Now, relics are something that is very common to us Genshin Impact players. You should already know that these are going to be very toxic and you're going to have a hard time getting the substats that you want. But first, let's go over the substats that you're going to want on some of these pieces. For the body, you're going to want to get outgoing healing bonus. For the boots, you're going to want to try to get HP percent as all of Natasha's skills are going to scale with HP percent. HP percent is obviously going to be very important for her, and that's why I recommend it for these fears as well. Lastly, for your rope, you're going to want energy regeneration rate. This is very, very good. You can go alternatively for HP percent if you want to get a little more scaling with our healing, but you really should be healing enough with the build I am suggesting you. So energy regeneration rate is going to be her for sure best in slot. I'd also like to point out that you do have the option of putting speed as the base stat on your boots instead of HP percent. Speed is a very valuable stat on this game and increasing your character's place in the turn order, and Natasha is a very, very slow unit. Her base speed is 98 for myself. If we compare that to other characters that I have, like Sele, who has 123, Tengyun has 118, 
you start seeing how slow Natasha is. So you do have the option of running speed on the boots if you want to try to increase your Natasha's place in the turn order just a little bit. However, generally, I do recommend you run HP percent. Substats for these pieces are going to be very simple. If you want to try to prioritize her healing so that she provides more healing bonus to the rest of your team, you're going to want to prioritize stats like HP percent and also flat HP. If you want her to go a little bit faster in the turn order and so that she gets more frequent turns, you're going to want to prioritize speed. And if you want to increase her resistance to debuffs, and other different effects, then you can try to go for a bit of effect resistance. Those are going to be generally her four best substats, HP percent, flat HP, speed, and effect resistance. Other than that, there are not too many other stats I would suggest for her. The best relic set for Natasha is going to be the Passerby of Wandering Cloud, which is the one I have for her right now. Unfortunately, it is in the four star variant, just because I've not got further enough in the game to unlock the five star variant of this yet but even once you get to that higher level of five stars this is still going to be her best option this not only gives an outgoing healing bonus of 10 percent it also is going to immediately restore one skill point every time you start the battle skill points are really valuable so getting one at the start of every battle is going to provide a lot of value for your team. If you cannot get the substats you want with the Passerby of Wandering Cloud, you can opt to go for some different two pieces. For example, the Guard of Withering Snow can help reduce damage by 8%. This can be a very good alternative if you're looking to make your Natasha a little more tanky. Another good option is going to be the Thief of Shooting Meteor, which has a two-piece effect that is going to increase your break effect. This can help Natasha break enemies a little bit faster with her normal attack. As for the rope and sphere spec, there is going to be a couple different options that you can go with. The first good one is going to be the Fleet of Ageless, which is going to increase Natasha's max HP. And when she reaches 120 speed or higher, all of the allies attack is going to increase by 8%. Another good option, which I don't have right now on my own account, is going to be the Sprightly Von Walk, which is going to increase the energy regeneration rate by 5%. And then also, whenever you reach speeds up to 145 or higher, the wearer's action is going to be advanced forward by 50% immediately upon entering battle. Now, this is good for Natasha especially because of how slow she is. However, if you cannot get her to that 145 speed range, this obviously becomes a lot less valuable than it would be if you were able to reach it. Generally, I would suggest that you go for the Fleet of Ageless, as this is just going to give her an overall buff with the max HP, and also you don't need your speed to be as high to get the bonus effect. With the Sprightly Bone Walk, you're going to need a lot more speed to get that bonus effect off. Next up, let's briefly discuss Natasha's Edelons. Now, these are going to be a little more limited to those whale spenders, or if you did end up wishing on that Sele banner, you probably have quite a lot of these, and we're just going to go over them briefly here. Her first Edelon is going to allow her to heal herself if she is below 30% HP. Uh, this can only trigger uh, one time, however, per battle. This one isn't my favorite. However, I have found this ability can come in clutch a lot when your Natasha is about to die on the next turn, and then luckily she gets off the one heal. However, because it can only trigger one time per battle, it's not going to be a really, really reliable Edelon. Her second one, Clinical Research, is going to allow her ultimate to grant continuous healing for a single turn to all allies who are below 30% HP at the beginning of their turn. However, because you're using this after her burst, generally all of your allies are going to be at max HP. So unless she's bursting and then your allies are getting hit and then going below 30%, generally I don't find this one is very useful and comes in handy a lot. Maybe in tougher stages of the simulated universe, you're getting attacked very fast, but generally this Edelon is not very useful. Her number three and her number five are just going to be scaling to her talents. Her number four, however, is my personal favorite. And we're going to discuss a little more why in a little bit. But it's very simple. After being attacked, she regenerates five extra energy. This can help a lot in towards getting up her burst. And depending on where you place her in the team setup, which we will get to in a minute, this can be very, very nice. Lastly, her sixth Edelon, Doctor's Grace, is just going to increase the damage of her physical attack based on her max HP. This can help her break a little bit easier, do a little more damage. Generally, I don't find it to be all that good, but if you want your Tasha to do just a tiny more damage, then you can go for this Edelon number six. 
let's talk about Natasha's team setup. Now, Natasha, because she is a healer, she is an extremely viable unit who can fit into almost any team composition. In terms of her placement in the roster, I always recommend putting her in one of the middle two slots and then putting the defender adjacent to Natasha on the outside. So you're going to want to put Natasha either on the third or fourth slot. And then you're going to want to put the defender right beside her on the outside. So that's going to be somebody like Gapard, somebody like March 7th. You're going to want to place that defender right beside Natasha. This is because the defender is going to be usually taunting enemies and trying to get the aggro towards them. And whenever that enemy is going to have an AoE move that is going to hit the adjacent tiles to the shielder, it's also going to hit Natasha too. This is good for one of two reasons. First of all, Natasha is a generally bulky unit who has a, a lot of HP. She's not a shielder, so she cannot block out all attacks, but she can generally take more damage than some of your lighter units can, like your hunt characters or your harmony characters, for example. They're just gonna be a little more frail and a little more easy to kill. The second bonus to this is if you have Natasha's Edelon at number four, you're gonna generate energy every time you get hit. So anytime the enemy does an AoE attack on our defender here, it's also gonna hit Natasha, allowing her to regenerate even more energy to get that ultimate back up on cooldown. Now as for these other two slots, they can really be anybody. Depending on what content you're doing in the game, it can really depend. For example, if I'm doing Forgotten Hall, maybe I'd want Sele. It can really be anybody you want. I personally suggest going with one main DPS character and then going with one debuffer slash buffer. So if I went with Sele in my main slot here, I would then want to go with either a buffer or a debuffer. A good one, for example, can be Pella. Another good example can be Asta or Tangyun. Obviously, Abronia is a good option if you have her. And this would be the kind of team I'd go with. But generally, Natasha can work with almost anybody. She is a very, very flexible unit who can be used in almost any team. Lastly, I just want to touch on quickly Natasha's viability in the simulated universe. Now, Natasha can be used in almost every single one of these worlds. There's really not one that she's bad in. Some of them, like World 6, for example, is not going to have a character that is weak to physical. So she's going to be a little more niche in worlds like these. However, it's still going to be essential to have a healer. So you're really still going to need her regardless. Her best world, in my opinion, is going to be World 5. She is extremely, extremely strong in this world against Kafka because Kafka's abilities are all going to involve around applying debuffs and having your units turn on each other in the middle of battle, but Natasha can essentially nullify all of those debuffs that Kafka is able to do and can keep your team very healthy as well if you have that bonus ability for her. As for the earlier stages like World 1, World 2, and World 3, she's probably not as necessary. You can really defeat these worlds with any units. They're pretty easy, not much to see there. Obviously, they're going to get a little harder as you uh, advance through them. I'd also like to state that she pairs really, really well with the Abundance Resonance. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this because this could be its whole separate video on its own. But essentially, if you get the Path of Abundance, you can like continuously heal more and more and more. And it's some of the harder content in this game. If you pair Natasha with this path, you can get healing like every other turn. It can be really, really nasty if you're able to pair these two together. Some good blessings like the ones that have the dewdrop effect, which is going to increase your damage essentially based on the value of your HP, which you can basically constantly have at 100% if you have this along with Natasha. So I would strongly recommend if you are struggling with later stages of the game, putting Natasha on your team along with the Blessing of Abundance. And with all that, that is going to be the end of our guide for today. If you guys enjoyed this and you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to leave a like down below or subscribe. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.